Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from narcissistic relationships and to learn the many ways people in narcissistic relationships are shamed. And that's what today's video is going to be about. Let's talk about delicate dumping. Now, I'm sure some of you are going to dark places in your mind about what delicate dumping is. And before you think this is some sort of potty reference, think again. Um, I have to say this is one more way, though, for people who are going through narcissistic relationships to be shamed. Once again, my guilty tabloid pleasure sent me down the rabbit hole of exploring what delicate dumping is. And apparently it is the equivalent of quiet quitting a relationship. It's a slow disengagement pulling back from a relationship you're in, an intimate relationship, and sort of hoping that you can just sort of end this relationship by bringing it to a soft landing. In many ways, it almost sounded like don't go deep disengagement or low contact or maybe even gray rock because it seems that the goal of delicate dumping is that the person would ideally break up with you, which obviously is often the hope when they grow gray rock I mean, when you go gray rock, I should say, that they get bored, they get out, which means you have to face less of their abandonment rage. If you leave them, you'd have to tolerate that. And if you do that, you might avoid some of the post-separation problems and abuse. So that's what you're, all, many people are trying to get ahead of in narcissistic relationships. So the situation then you have is that, that this, this delicate dumping is sort of the disengagement, again, in the hope they get bored, all right? but there's always a little wrinkle in there. I thought it was actually not a bad plan. Well, there's a relationship art expert they cited, and I actually went and did a deeper dive and found that she's somebody who works on a dating site that is about luxury dating with testimonials that say things like, our first date was out of a storybook, our second date was on a yacht, and then lots of pictures of attractive people where the caption is, I am successful and I am attractive and telling you you're going to meet charming and charismatic people here. So I was like, oh my goodness, the industry of love bombing is alive and well, folks. But I also think that an expert with this kind of orientation of getting people into sort of grandiose relationships may not be sharing guidance that would work for folks who are experiencing narcissistic abuse. So what their expert in the article said, this really was what this one person's take was on delicate dumping. She went on to castigate and criticize this idea of delicate dumping, saying that it was cowardly, that the person who does this disengagement is slowly retreating to avoid having a difficult conversation. Yeah. And that a person who does this, mm -hmm, here we come, is incapable of being honest and straightforward and can't handle confrontation. That people who delicate dump are childish and that it's not kind and that it's just best to be open and communicative. Girlfriend's never been in a narcissistic relationship. I found it fascinating that a person who works at a site, like I said, that seems like it may pull for grandiose and aspirational daters, would be so quick to shame those who may be trying to disengage safely from a toxic mess. I got to tell you folks, you know I get really frustrated when I read this stuff because it harms survivors of these narcissistic relationships. Listen, if there's two healthy people in a relationship and slowly it's working out. I get that delicate dumping there may be a cop out, that the other person who could handle that conversation, you should have the damn conversation. But anyone, when anyone who engages in this disengagement strategy, that this article called delicate dumping, when that person is being painted with the brush of being a coward and childish and avoidant, simply because they're trying to avoid the amped up emotional abuse of being gaslighted and manipulated and being blamed for everything or simply cannot endure one more shape-shifting conversation and being future faked and just is simply hoping that the toxic person leaves because the person who's in this relationship is saying, I cannot handle their wrath anymore and it's too overwhelming. When that poor individual is being shamed, I've got a real problem with that because this is what survivors of narcissistic abuse go through. We're here once again with the belief that all relationships are one size fits all. And so the advice would be, right, listen, even a personal trainer would say, oh, I see your ankle is sprained. So maybe we're not going to be able to do the same workout that I'm having everyone else do today because their ankles work, right? It's no different here. 
the relationship advice that is given to most people is not going to work for people who are going through narcissistic abuse. And the quick pivot to shaming people who are doing exactly what works in these kinds of relationships, and it's a lot psychologically safer than confronting a narcissistic person, to me, that's not okay. If you have a relationship, if you're in a relationship where you are not invalidated and manipulated and gaslighted and mistreated on a regular basis, yeah, then uh, as a psychologist, I would agree completely. By all means, you should communicate, you should be clear, and no, you shouldn't delicately dump. If you're feeling disconnected, show the respect to that person and share that. But if the ground rules of your relationship are that your reality is revised, you're invalidated, the other person refuses to be accountable or take responsibility, and your fears about the rage and shaming you would face if you shared your feelings or emotions or experiences are terrifying or overwhelming, delicate dumping, or perhaps just no longer engaging in a relationship that is not good for you to keep yourself psychologically safe, yeah, that may be the best path forward. When you are experiencing narcissistic abuse, the usual relationship advice doesn't cut it. If you are trying to back out of a narcissistic relationship, choose the path that allows you to get out as psychologically intact as possible. Unfortunately, most people who go through narcissistic relationships have listened for so long about how they're too sensitive and too emotional and you know are... are not willing to have the fight. Well, you can't win the fight, so why would you? Or whatever it may be. There's so much gaslighting, so much emotion, shaming, all of that ha that happens that when a person who's gone through one of these relationships reads some of this nonsense tabloidy relationship advice, that then they're going to say, oh, maybe I shouldn't disengage. Maybe it means I'm the unhealthy one. You then take the blame onto yourself for being the unhealthy one. You roll up well-intentioned with your journal and say, Where can we communicate? And the narcissistic person is going to twist you into a pretzel with all the gaslighting and all of that. I don't see the win in that. And the fact is, when you break up with a narcissistic individual, they do not like that. And the misery that follows can be worse than the relationship. So the hope for some people in these relationships is, please, heaven above, let them break up with me. Then they'll feel like they're in control. I will finally be free. So delicate dumping could be a way to do that. Now, I have to say this. Another last thought on delicate dumping is the reason it may not work in a narcissistic relationship is exactly the same reason gray rocking doesn't always work. The rage is going to escalate initially. Why aren't you talking to me? Why aren't you listening to me? Why aren't you this? Why aren't you that? Why are you doing this? Did your therapist tell you to do this? Whatever. So you have to be able to endure that ramp up. If you're lucky, you get to the top of that and then come down to them actually being bored. Maybe they'll cheat on you. Maybe they'll find someone else. That's the hope. They're not leaving you until they find new supply. I can promise you that. So that might sort of force the hand in this kind of situation. But at the end of the day, you can call it delicate dumping, you call it low contact, you can call it disengagement, or you can call it gray rock. The fact is that these techniques, they're not optimal, they're not ideal, and no, they don't look like healthy communication. And that's because it's not possible. And shaming a person who's already being harmed in these relationships by saying you're not communicating right, nothing delicate about that. Thanks again.